Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to become an elite wedge player, part two. Hey guys, Eric here at the Bethlehem Golf Club. I want to talk to you today about how to become an elite wedge player, part two. Now, what this video is all about is the swing plane. Now, as we talked about in video number one, setup is crucial. The next thing, the next principle we need to be good at is swing plane. We'll talk about that here now. Now, this is actually one of a full series we did of a master class on wedges and short irons. It's all about hitting the ball closer to the hole and building a system from 30 up until 150 yards. Now, we're not all going to hit it 300, 325, 350 like the guys on tour, but we can be elite from 30 to 150. So regardless of whether you're a scratch or you're trying to break 100 or 80 or 90, wherever you're at, this is a crucial zone for us to improve and we all can get better. I'm going to guide you through how to do that in this video and in this series. If you do want to check out the full master class, right, um, the link will be in the description down below. By the way, all the members of KagornoGolf.com do get access to this and all of our master classes for free. So be sure to check out Corona Golf as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. So let's talk about in-swing principles for the wedges. What are the things you need to do once you start swinging the club that we need to focus on specifically for solidness of contact? And there's a couple that we want to highlight here. So um, if we assume we have our setup piece in, right, and we've gone through and we've practiced that and we're getting more comfortable with that, there's a couple pieces during both the backswing, downswing, and follow through that we need to highlight. The first one that's the most relevant that I see kind of go off a lot that causes contact issues is the swing plane. And really the swing plane during the backswing. Because we're hitting wedges and the swing length is shorter, we don't have time to make up for any errors during the backswing like we normally would with a full swing. If I make a full swing and I go way under plane, but I have a real long backswing, I have plenty of time to make that up during the downswing. If I only make a backswing that goes halfway back, let's say, I don't have as much time to make up for it, so it's more important that I get that back on plane during my backswing. So if I take my normal setup, what are we talking about swing plane here? What are we trying to accomplish? If I take my normal setup position, the goal would be to have the butt of the club roughly in line with my belt line. So if I kind of drew a line up the shaft through my belt buckle, that would be kind of my swing plane. Now the idea is during my backswing, I want to stay on that plane or I want to go slightly outside of that plane. What we can't do during the backswing is go too far inside of the plane. So our first priority for in-swing is that we're on the plane. So if I kind of did a little half backswing, that would get the club head even with my hands or as I go back slightly outside my hands. If I have that little line up here and I start going too far under plane or too far inside early, because I don't have time to make up for that, I'm gonna be too under plane again during my downswing. And being too under plane during my downswing is gonna cause fat and thin shots. So the checkpoints when you're doing this with our good setup would be get the club head even with or slightly outside your hands. Again, I'd rather you be too far outside than too far inside, right? And this is one of those areas now along with the setup where you have to start to give yourself feedback. There are no surefire feels that are gonna fix all this. You have to see where you're at and start to adjust. But if we just hit a normal little 40 or 50 yarder and I feel like I'm trying to get this club on or slightly outside, that club on the way back should remain on the same plane that I started with or be outside. Again, error on it being too far outside. And there's some different drills you can do, right? We can put an object in your way back here if you realize that you're too far inside, but error on the club head with the wedges working a little bit more up and out versus it being too far inside. Regardless of the distance of shot, up until I get to a full swing, that is the first priority in terms of in-swing. Stay on plane or slightly outside. Don't get too far inside. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you like the video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe if you haven't. Another reminder, every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are live here on YouTube for Rapid Fire Golf. Would love to see you guys there.